Good evening, gentlemen. This is a World War III Team Yankee painting session. Today I'm painting 24 M113s to complement my Iranian forces. Luckily, I was able to see one on display at the Fort Douglas Museum close to where I live. I have six boxes of M113s to assemble and paint. Quite an intimidating task. The kit is simple enough to understand, however, and each tank took me just seven and a half minutes to put together. I start off by gluing the groove along the top side of the bottom hole section in preparation for attaching the top part of the hole. This top hole part is for the mortar variant of the M113. To finish the mortar variant's top hole, we glue on this folding hatch part. There are two knobs on one side that will fit into place in the corresponding holes on top. Here, I prepped this section of the model with glue from the front hole plate to be attached. Like the rest of this model, it slides into place quite easily. The back of the tank is comprised of the rear hole and rear hatch. These are easy to fit into place, but a little tricky to glue together without making it look messy. I opt to slide the parts together and lay down a bunch of glue on where the inside would be. I then prep the edges of the back of the hole where this part will be placed. There are two knobs down below that will act as guides and will enable you to slide it into the correct position. I prep both left and right sides with glue in preparation for where the tank treads will go. There we go, I've completed the hole. It's a very simple design, pretty much a box on wheels. Just a few more parts and we're done. A small hatch will be glued here on top of the hole. Unfortunately, I didn't follow the instructions close enough and glued it on upside down. The handle is supposed to be on the inside of the tank, not the outside. Four of my tanks are different variants from the regular transports, and to show this, I'm gluing on just the hinge to keep the hatch open. Two of these M113 sport a 106mm anti-tank gun. With a small dab of glue, I place it on the right side of the hatch. With a small bit of glue, this gunner's mount slides right on top of its corresponding circle on the top plate. This 50 caliber machine gun hardly needs any glue to get it to stick onto its mount. Looking good. Now for the hatches. The driver's hatch has a square knob on top, and like the 50 cal, doesn't need much glue. Some hatches I'll keep open and others closed. As opposed to the driver's hatch, the gunner's is smooth and I glue it on the same way. Open hatches are pretty delicate, so be careful. The final part to attach will be the water vein. A bit of glue on the back and it will stick securely to the front of the M113. It will have two pegs on the bottom that you can line up with another pair on the hole. The other variant of the M113 comes with a mortar. We'll simply glue the two pegs and insert them into the circular base. With the assembly complete, I use a base coat of Citadel's Chaos Black, followed up by Battlefront's Grenadier Green to match the color of my other Iranian tanks. I liberally apply Citadel's Steel Legion Drab to the tank treads. The treads have a large surface area and I want to make sure that I get every nook and cranny. With Citadel's Abandoned Black, I paint the inside of the driver and gunner's hatch. Later I'll be gluing in both a figure for the driver and gunner, so you don't have to make it look too pretty. I use a 50-50 mixture of Abandoned Black and Battlefront's Rocket Steel to paint the exposed metal parts of the M113's 50 cal machine gun. Mixing in Abandoned Black makes it look not too unrealistically shiny. With Battlefront's Cobra Drab, I paint the ammo box for the gun. 
Using rocket steel, I paint on a small amount to any tool situated on the outside of the hole. There's a shovel, an axe, and a sledgehammer. This adds a nice bit of detail that helps make the model look more alive. I paint a coiled tow cable on the back of the tank with the same color. For the handles and the shafts of the tools, I paint using Battlefront's Woodland Brown. Now to apply the shader. Using Citadel's Nuln Oil, I cover the machine gun, tools, and other noticeable details on the take that I want to pop. I make sure to douse the tank wheels and tank treads with the shader because of their large surface area. I can quickly swipe away any mistakes that I make so the shader dries a bit slower than paint. Time to apply some dry dusting. I was running low on Battlefront's dry dust paint, so I switched back and forth with Citadel's Terminenta Stone. When dry dusting my Iranians, I go beyond just hitting the highlights and batter every surface heavily with the paint. I'm trying to get a desert weathered look on my Iranian tanks, as if they had been exposed to the elements for a long time. I make sure to be as gentle as possible around the hatches, since they are still a very delicate part of the model. Now to paint the soldiers that are visible from the outside of the tank. Some will become gunners and drivers, while others have anti-tank weapons, and some part of a mortar team. The metal figures need a quick clipping of artifacts before I hit them with a black base coat. I cover them all with two coats of grenadier green paint. Using a 50-50 mixture of Battlefront's Battlefield Brown and European Skin, I carefully paint any exposed flesh on the model, that being the face and hands. With Battlefront's Worn Rubber, I apply a minute amount of paint to the soldier's microphone equipment and goggles. Battlefront's Cobra Drab is used on any packs and bags as part of the soldier's kit. I also use Cobra Drab to hit the binocular instruments on the tow launcher. The mortar also gets the same coat. The tow gets a bit of dry dusting to help it stand out from the rest of the figure. For the mortar shells, I'm using Citadel's Hashet Copper as it goes with the theme for the rest of my Iranians. It looks really cool on the tabletop. If you want to be more conservative though, use Cobra Drab as it will be a more realistic look. Null oil is doused on these figures just like the tanks they'll be occupying. Just make sure that it doesn't pull up too much in the crevices and obstruct the fine detail. The mortar base has a peg on the bottom that fits snugly into a hole on the inside of the M113 hull. It takes me a moment to get it to click into place and to straighten out in the desired direction that I have chosen. For the mortar crews, I try to get as much glue on their feet as possible to get them to stick once I put them down inside the tank hole with the mortar. There's no specific spot that these figures go or snap into place, so you can place them wherever you wish. Last up are the gunner and driver figures, who need just a dab of glue to get them to stick into place.
And there we go, a full company of M113s that can now transport my mechanized infantry into battle along with other variants to support. Thank you for watching. Until next time, Godspeed.